let me be very, very <laughs> careful because there, there, there are some Geno Smith supporters out there like my boy Juan from Rock Nation that, that, that just continue to bug me about this boy. Let me be very, very clear about where I stand. Geno Smith is clearly the starter for the New York Jets. He is clearly an upgrade from Mark Sanchez because, if nothing else, of A, his poise, and B, his ability to run the football. I thought he was solid yesterday, 24-38, 256 yards, threw a touchdown, had a fumble and an interception, but I'm not going to hold that against him. In the end, he's a rookie in his first start, and I thought he was relatively impressive. I mean, I'll give him credit where credit is due. The issue that I have with Geno is after the game when you got your arms waved, like, you know, you, you did such a big thing. If Levante David was not so ridiculously idiotic in, that le- in shoving him while he was out of bounds, you know what I mean, there's nothing that really blew me away. He didn't play badly, and he definitely should be the starter. Not knocking that. But I just think that sometimes he's com- he comes across – as actually doing more than he actually did, you know, trying to give that impression. And I don't feel that. You got to have justification if you want to stand on a bench acting like teammates should leap you, should throw you, you on their shoulders and carry you off right. the field. That's all I'm saying. But I do <laughs> wish him luck, and, and, and I do have faith in him. But I do think that he, 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 he can be a little extra sometimes, Skip. He really can. Okay. If not for poor Levante David, a good football player who made one bad decision yesterday late in that game, I'm going to guess we would not be doing this topic this high in this show. Is that fair to say? If Tampa had hung on. I don't know about that because we would have done the topic. We just would have been talking about how they lost. Yeah, I don't know if we'd be doing it this high. But as, as poorly as Josh Freeman played, Stephen A., and I do love him, He did complete the 37-yard pass to Vincent Jackson that set up what I thought, silly me, was the game-winning field goal a little bit earlier than that. And all of a sudden, to Geno's credit, he hit Kellen Winslow down the middle there playing what looked like kind of prevent defense, found him in the middle in a seam. Then can't find anybody, scrambles. And if, if, again, Levante had just let him run out of bounds, he's attempting, I'm pretty sure, a Hail Mary with three seconds left. If you tell me he's exactly. a miracle worker who would have completed that pass, we would have been leading this show with that topic instead of doing it in the third or fourth slot here. So the point is, Stephen A., I, I, I'm not buying in long term. I stand by everything I've said about Geno pre-draft, not sold, but he did play better than I thought he would yesterday. And I thought the kid's psyche got a big break when Mark Sanchez was ruled completely out. He is clearly injured, according to many reports, one from our Chris Mortensen. So he's going to be gone for a while, which is nothing but great for Gino because he didn't have to fear a quick hook for Sanchez. So he could get away with the fumble and the interception and whatever bad, other bad decisions he made because Matt Sims ain't coming in for you, kid. You, you got it. It's all yours. Be my guest. <laughs> And he did do some good things yesterday. But when I heard all the Jets last night raving about his poise, I'm sorry, but you and I have talked and talked about what happened the last five games last year, and poise didn't come to mind when I thought about the way he came apart. So let's wait. Let's see. Nice start. Really nice outcome. Thank you, God. It came from nowhere. (laughs) Thank you, Levante. Well, well. (laughs) Well, a couple of things, Skip. A couple of things. I want to give the kid credit from the standpoint of him going up against Darrell Revis and Goldston and yeah. Banks and those boys. Tampa secondary is no joke. Give credit no. where credit is due. That's the one thing that was good about them. I mean, Greg Shiano really, really needs to look in the mirror and really question himself as a coach considering how inept the Tampa Bay Buccaneers looked yesterday afternoon offensively. I mean, they just looked incre- completely undisciplined and embarrassingly inept, and something needs to be said about that even though I believe in Greg Schiano as a coach, but they just looked bad yesterday. Back to the Jets. I also think uh, it's it's, it's important, and we're obliged, Skip, to point out what a bunch of cowards they look like as an organization because there's no way on earth you just found out yesterday 
that uh, that yeah. that Mark Sanchez had the labrum tear. Yep. You knew that days, if not weeks earlier. And being the wusses that they are, they sat up there and they held that information to keep the heat off of Rex Ryan. I thought it was very weak, very pathetic, very cowardly for them to do that. If the man is injured because you threw him in a game in the fourth quarter of a preseason game, stand up and own it. I thought that was very weak, but that's the problem with the Jets. They care too much about image and not enough about results. Back to Geno. In the end, what it comes down to is that the kid can play. He can do some things. There's reasons for optimism mm -hmm. and for hope because you wanted something that said, okay, we don't have Mark Sanchez anymore, but can you give us something a little bit better? And I definitely think his upside is better because he's a better athlete in terms of his ability to run with the football and make plays with his feet as opposed to with just his arm. Okay. So I think that is a good thing. But in the end, I think the problem with Gino is I think Gino's got a little bit of the Rex syndrome. Uh -oh. I think his mouth and his bravado will elevate the level of expectations, and ultimately he'll do nothing but disappoint because he comes across as somebody who thinks he's a little bit more than he is right now. He may get there, but he ain't there yet. And that's how he act. He acts sometimes in the preseason, in the draft, and after yeah, yesterday's okay. game. So you took your shot at Rex. They covered up the injury to protect his ego, his credibility. I'm going to credit Rex to wind all this up. He can coach defense. We both agree with yes. that. They're no joke yes, on do. defense, Stephen A. I know you're ripping Not Tampa all. Bay, but listen, they shut down Doug Martin yesterday, and they're going to give New England fits with their defense. Can't say much about their offense because I'm not sure about it, but Rex can coach that defense and it will keep them in a lot of games this year. Wait, I need you, Stephen Mohammed A. Mohammed Wilkinson. Hold on Mohammed one second, Stephen Copels, A. All the, the, I, want you sorry, and ahead, I want you and Skip to quantify because impressive is kind of vague. On a scale of 1 to 10, how impressive was Gino in your opinion? I give him about a 7. On a, I'm going to do a first start rookie scale. Yeah. Let's go because that's a tough scale. I'll go 8. Okay. Wow. Yeah. All right, that's fair. I'm still right, gonna, I'm, I'm still gonna, I'm, I'm still gonna give him a seven, but I think that he could be nine, quick, fast, and in a hurry. That defense is gonna help because that defense is big time. But I wasn't talking about them stopping Doug Martin, Skip. I was talking about the myriad of yeah, penalties yeah, right, that they it. incurred. Yeah, they were yeah. just disorganized. Now, if we're doing a Tom Brady Tampa scale, Bay was disorganized. Tom Brady scale. Yeah. I thought Gino was about a one yesterday. If we're doing we're a Tom to Brady scale, that's not fair.